Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And as you all know, as you all know, all the ballers out there, um, we always manage to find just some some really interesting guests because I think, I mean, there's just so many people doing a lot of dope things, but I'm, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to have a platform just to, you know, be able to shine the spotlight and be able to highlight just some amazing things that people are doing. So we have another exciting guest today and we're going to get to today's guest in just one moment. Uh, but before we do that, I want to just lay out the premise of the podcast. The purpose of this podcast is ultimately to be a resource for student athletes, as well as the staff that serve and support them. And we like to focus on stories, strategies and successes to help them succeed beyond their degree. Right. Because we want to make sure that we're setting our young leaders up for success, not just to perform on the court or not just on the field or in the pool or anything like that. But we want them to have the tools that they need to really thrive in life post graduation. So now I'm, I'm excited to bring today's guest uh, to the stage virtually to the show. So uh, he, he's the head women's basketball coach at the University of Wisconsin River Falls, and he's none other than Mr. Blake Dudonis. Coach Blake, how are we doing today? I'm doing great, man. I appreciate you having me on here. I've been a, a fan. I know when we connected for the first time uh, a, a couple months ago, uh, I've been a fan ever since, so I'm excited to be on. Definitely. I, I definitely appreciate appreciate you saying this. And uh, just like I told you before, I said I was going to wait to bring you out to tell you. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, I'm really just inspired by by your passion. I'm really inspired by the way that you move, by the way that you fearlessly lead. Um, so I definitely want to want to give you those flowers as well, coach. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. That means a lot. Seriously. Thank you. Definitely. Definitely. So now, I mean, I, I just hit on one title or one role that you currently play in life. So so let let the good people out there know uh, just just a little bit more about yourself or, you know, please just just take the mic. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's uh, it's been an interesting journey in my my career and just kind of in my life in general. Um, like you said, I'm the head coach at Wisconsin River Falls right now. Uh, I've been an assistant at the D1 and D2 level of four. I coached at the University of Buffalo. Uh, I coached at Gardner-Webb University, which is my alma mater. And I coached at Merrimack College in Massachusetts. Uh, I've also done broadcasting for the SEC Network Plus. Uh, I used to do some freelance writing. I did some scouting for the Washington Mystics and the WNBA. I've done some scouting uh, at the grassroots level. So I, I've really kind of been all over the place and done a lot of different things. So it's been a, a winding journey for sure. Um, and outside of, of just career stuff, I, I consider myself an, uh, an activist, um, an ally, uh, and someone who tries to use his voice or whatever platform I may have to try to, you know, in, inflict positive change and, and speak out for people who maybe don't have a voice. So uh, I definitely keep my, uh, my hands full with all of that. So, yeah, that's, 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 the, uh, that's the Cliff Notes version of, of kind of who I am and, and how I got here. Excellent, excellent. So we're so so we're de we're definitely going to dive into the in, into the activism uh, piece of your story in just a little bit. But I I want to just take it back because you just listed off like seven different things. <laughs> so, so, coach, just talk talk to me a little bit about like how how did you decide that you want like coaching was what was going to be next? Just like you said, you were doing some broadcasting and doing some freelance right. Like, just talk about like how your journey led you up to that. Yeah, well, before before all that stuff, you know, looking back on on my youth, I I think of the greatest influences in my life and my coaches, uh, and even to this day, my high school soccer coach is I still go to him, uh, I still call him, I called him like last month and had was like, hey, what do you think about this? How how should I handle this? So uh, for me, coaches have always made a great impact on my life, and so when I was in college, I was a practice player for the women's basketball team at Gardner Webb, and just getting to see the day to day and how uh, how much went into obviously the basketball stuff, but just seeing the impact the coaches had, I was like, man, this is, this is something I want to do. This kind of suits me anyway. And so that's kind of how I got into it. Uh, I ended up stepping away from coaching for a little bit. Uh, I met my now wife, uh, Carly, who's the associate head coach of the Minnesota Gophers women's basketball team now, but we were both coaching and living uh, pretty much across the country. And it was, it was difficult. So mm. I stepped out and, 
I uh, thought it was best for us to be able to be in the same place. So I started doing the broadcasting and the writing and everything. And they were fulfilling in their own ways and they were fun in their own ways. But uh, the goal was always to get back to coaching because I missed it. I missed the relationships with the student athletes. I missed just all of the, the that kind of stuff uh, and certainly the competition. But honestly, uh, I'm a relationship kind of oriented coach. That's my, my thing. And so I missed that aspect of it. So when the opportunity arose uh, with my, my current job, I went after it and was really fortunate to get it. So uh, it was one of those things where the few things in my life I considered ever doing, broadcasting, writing, coaching, I've got to do all of them. And there's not many people that can say that. So I count myself lucky for that. De- definitely, definitely. So I, ha- I have to ask, I have to ask. So you said you were a, you said you were a practice player for the women's basketball team? That's right. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I played sports my whole life. And when I was at school, I wasn't uh, a division one athlete by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, I was bored after like a month. I'm like, man, it's like, mm. you know, I'm usually playing a sport. And I saw a posting that said, hey, if you have high school basketball experience, the women's basketball team needs you to play against them. And I was like, what is, I don't, I've never heard of that. But let me let me see what this is about. And uh, I reached out to the coach. And they're like, yeah, you just come to practice every day. And, you know, you just you basically run the other team's stuff and we'll give you free gear. And I was like, all right, bet. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> like, what, what are we talking so, about? Let's go. <laughs> are, we, are we still talking? Why are we still yeah, talking? Like, what, you give me shoes and gear to play hey. basketball? That's a deal. Yeah. So that, I mean, legitimately it was that innocent. And it was like, all right, let's come. You come in next week and let's do it. And literally it was me going in that next week. And it started my coaching career and brought me to here. I would not be here if I hadn't done that. Hmm. Wow. Wow. That's that's not something you hear every day. That's pretty neat. <laughs> yeah, it's unique for sure. Man. Yeah. 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 So, h- how did you decide women's basketball was was going to be the was was going to like for you to coach women's basketball? I'm, I'm sure the conversation has to come up often. It's like, what made you go decide women's basketball versus men's basketball or anything? Just talk a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah, I get asked that uh, a decent bit. Uh, hey, would you ever switch over or anything like that? But for me, I think my personality just, um, it lends itself to the women's game. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty patient. That's one of my, my positive qualities, uh, in my life. Um, I, I like to teach. Uh, I, I like to, um, you know, sometimes people talk about, um, it's a stereotype, but it's like all oh, this drama with girls and stuff. It's like, there's not drama, but there is more, there are emotions that are discussed mm-hmm. and exhibited. And I'm an emotional person. Like I connect with that. So, for me, it just, it suits my personality where I, I don't, I like dealing with that kind of stuff. I like sitting there for two hours after practice and hashing things out with our players. Like that stuff doesn't bother me. That's kind of, I'm like, that's kind of why I'm doing this. You know, I think that's what's important uh, at the college level. So for me, it just, it works out that way for me. Um, so I've never really considered uh, coaching um, men at all. And uh, I don't, I don't foresee that changing. Mm, wow. Wow. I mean, I love that. I, I think I think you really hit on something there that's that's really pivotal. And just one talking about how patient you are. But even in addition to that, like talking about hashing out things. And I, I think it's I think it's ironic, actually, just understanding the fact and I'm I'm not generalizing. Well, I'm somewhat generalizing based on my experience, but thinking about how sometimes I can internalize things. So I can only imagine because I internalize things during me playing basketball in college. So I can only imagine on the men's <laughs> side in the men's locker room, but we'll, we'll leave that over there. We'll leave that over there. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. We won't, we won't touch that. We won't touch that. Okay. <laughs> oh man. But, but, but coach, I, I, I have, I have to ask you because um, I, I think this was, this was when you really, you, you really connected with me on the heart level, I would say. And I don't even know if you realized it at that time, but uh what, that that few months ago when we had our first exchange when we were in a we we're in a group and and it was a gr- a, a group of coaches that, that were called together I, I think it was coach p who put this together and then he, he called this group of coaches black white down the line uh, of just wanting to have a conversation and earlier you talked about uh about you being an activist I, I want i want you just to talk about where where that stems from because when i heard you speaking that day it, it, it wasn't you speaking to the point of i'm doing this to check a box i'm doing this just because this is what i'm supposed to quote unquote be doing but but you were speaking from a place of fr- from a true heart space so can you just, just talk a little bit talk a little bit about that and, and where that where that steams from for you yeah i i 
it's I've given that question a lot of thought myself because I've always been someone who has been passionate about other a bit I'm a little bit of a bleeding heart like when I see someone going through a struggle I, I want them I want to help them I, I don't like seeing that I like to see people happy and enjoying life and so for me I really do think the you know the tipping point for me like a lot of this country was when George Floyd was murdered this summer uh, I lived seven miles to the dot. 7.0 miles from the spot where he was killed. And so mm -hmm. it hit home a little bit in that regard. And for me, you know, talking to former student athletes of mine and, you know, the vast majority of my, you know, former players are, are black and uh, even seeing current ones, just really having these gut wrenching emotions of, I just feel like people don't love me because of the color of my skin. Like, it just it, it hit home in a different way, and it's a shame it took a, a moment like that to really kind of spur me forward. But it was one of those things where I looked around. It's like, man, I've got you know, I've got whatever platform I've got, however big it is, however small it is. I feel obligated to use it to try to invoke this change because there's people I know and care about and love that are hurting, and they've been screaming their whole lives, please listen, please listen. And no one's listening. And, uh, and so again, having something happen so close that obviously resonated around the world, it was just for me, it was kind of that moment where it's like, man, if you're really about people and you're really about, you know, helping and encouraging, it's like, that's what you're actually about. It's time to put up or shut up. That's, I mean, that's honestly the conversation I have myself. I'm like, you can say or think that you care about people and stuff, but if you don't actually use your voice right now in an active way, then you're a hypocrite and you got to shut it down. And so I said, well, all right, let's go. Let's, 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 let's get out there. Let's, let's talk about it because it is true. And, and hey, you're, you, you get it right. You're, you're a black male and you've, it's nothing new. These conversations, the black community has been talking about this kind of stuff forever. And unfortunately it takes white people to actually speak on it for other white people to actually hear it. And I said, all right, if that's going to be my role, let's do it. And so I immersed myself and educated myself and listened to people like on the call you and I were on. I mean, I was talking, but I was listening too because I'm just like, I got to be better. I got to know what I'm talking about. I got to be, you know, I got to be sharp and on my P's and Q's. And so I just, and from there, I was no looking back. And that's what I do. I, when I do something, I'm like, I'm going to do this thing. And so this is no different. And it's actually important. It's not basketball. Like I always say like basketball, <laughs> it's important, but it's a game, man. Like, you know, there's, it There's is. a three-year-old somewhere in this neighborhood playing basketball. Like it's, it ain't that important. Like, come on. And so when we're actually talking about the livelihoods of people and and just walking around and being treated fairly, then that's some real stuff. And so I've just kind of leaned into that. And whatever good, whatever negatives come my way, uh, I've got a lot of people uh, with me that I'm standing beside and standing on the shoulders of where I'm trying to just uh, really uh, use that platform the best way I can. And I'm not perfect, but I, I, I'm just trying my best to be the best I can. Yeah, yeah. So you said you started you started educating yourself. So so the, for the individual out there, and and I'm 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 asking I'm asking this question to you, but at the same time I'm also asking to, to gain insight for myself as well. <clears throat> but the individual out there who might be in, in a space into where they have privilege, mm -hmm. right? To, to where there's some form of privilege. What what would you say would be the first step in? in educating oneself or what would you say would be the first step that, that like you took in educating yourself, you know, just in this? Well, the first thing I'd say is just coming to grips with saying someone has privilege and, and it's not an insult, right? It's not your fault, right? It's not my fault. I was born with the complexion of skin. I have It's not my fault. I didn't choose that, but I did. And therefore I have some privilege that's associated with that. And so that's, that's just true, right? That ain't nothing to do with me. That's just the way it is. And so just accepting it, because so often you hear white privilege and, and pe white people go, oh, 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 I don't, they, they take offense to it. And, <laughs> and so accepting, hey, it has nothing to do with you. It's okay. You didn't do anything wrong. But if we continue to ignore it, now you're doing something wrong. And so one, just embracing it and, and fully conceptualizing what that means, right? And just, okay, that's the thing that exists. I've got it. Cool. Now let's move on and utilize it. And my big thing was reading. Um, I read a ton of books this summer. Uh, we actually did a book club with our our team um, called Me and White Supremacy. And it talked about, because uh, when we hear white supremacy, we think about the people, you know, storming the Capitol. And, and, and while that is a far version of it, it's also in the, you know, 
it's in the little details of the day, uh, the microaggressions uh, that are in the language uh, of white people. It's mm-hmm. the the little things that you don't even realize. And that book was huge because again, that book, that title, Me and White Supremacy, the scariest, scary title. Uh, yeah. And then you get into it and you realize even me, someone who's really, you know, trying to, to fight the good fight, like, oh my gosh, man, I do do that. Or I do, I had said that before and didn't even realize that it was continuing on that white privilege, that white supremacy in the world. And so that was huge for me. I mean, that was really eye opening and it was really tough. And the book forward said, this is going to be tough. Like you're going to have to really deal with some things. And we did as a team. They're super honest with these things. I was like, gosh, man, I didn't even think about this kind of stuff. And, and you realize how just the little things every day continues that kind of thing. So that was big. Um, I read uh, Tani Hasi Coates, who's great. I've been listening to podcasts. So I've really just mm. tried to listen to different voices from people who don't look like me just to, again, hear things from a different perspective. And it's incredible. And sometimes that you hear stuff and you're like, okay, I don't. I don't quite see what they're saying, but I'm listening. But there's other times where you have light bulbs go off and you're like, whoa, I've never thought about that. And that's absolutely mm. true. Um, so having that openness and willingness and, and not being offended, again, not having a, a heart of being offended, but just having an open mind and, and listening. And that's been that's been huge for me. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really big because I had a conversation with uh, with, with, with a friend of mine uh Dr. Brett McCabe, he's a really, really good guy. And we, we just had a conversation just because we don't look alike. Uh, I mean, we were from around the same area, but, you know, some the experience is just different. And we were we we're just unpacking uh, just in that conversation. But I, I really I really uh, I really can appreciate what, what you're saying. But I, I, I have to know, Coach, but how, how was that experience, though, as you're going through doing the book club with your team and, you know, everybody's reading this book and there's some people that, that are black, some people that are white. And just down, like what, what, just talk about that. It was, uh, it was hard. (laughs) Uh, I don't like using the word hard because I think it's a, it's a cop out word, but it was hard. Um, Because one, just to, I mean, the fact that, and and the whole team didn't read it because I said, I don't know, I don't want you, you know, I'm not trying to force anything like, but if you, if you're open, like let's read it. And so a lot of the team did. Uh, So that was hard. That was good. That was the first hurdle. But then Mm -hmm. when you first get into it, you have to be real honest with yourself which is one thing, but then you have to be honest with all these people, right? And so the first few chapters were really, there was a lot of awkward silence. And, and I, you know, I moderated it, obviously, and uh, reading, preparing to, to moderate it, the, the writer of the book said, like, there's going to be awkward silence, and you just got to sit in it. Like, you just got to live in it. And it was like, okay, yeah. And we, so we have, you know, I think that first call was like an hour and 15 minutes, and like, 35 minutes of it was probably just silence, like people staring at each other on the Zoom, you know? Because uh, it's like, well, you know, we have to talk about this, but someone's got to go first and, and open up. So it was, it was uncomfortable. It, it was, it was really, it was, it was a challenge. And then after you picked up some steam, you know, weeks three, week four, and the topics are getting more difficult, but we had established a safe place of being honest with each other and, and not judging each other. So it was really cool because when you're getting to those harder conversations, they were easier to have. And those silences did grow much smaller uh, and we're able to open up. And And the coolest thing for me is afterwards, you know, I, I'm in my 30s, right? So I've had a little bit more life experience than our kids who are 18 to 22. But we, I've had a few kids come in the office since then. Hey, I was in, you know, the apartment and this conversation came up. I, I just felt like it was wrong, but I didn't know how to like speak to it. Like, what, what should I have said? What can I like say and go back to, you know, cause so-and-so was saying this and I was it just rubbed me the wrong way. And we were able to sit there and actually break down things and go back. And they're going back to, you know, their friend groups. And even if they're all white friend groups being courageous enough to say, Hey, hold on now. Like, that's not right. This let's, mm. let's talk this out. And so that's been the coolest part for me is, these kids, you know, when I was 19 years old, yeah, I don't want, I don't really want no problems. Right. So I'm not going to like call someone out on something like, especially something that serious where we're talking about, you know, racial undertones and things. So for our kids to go back and courageously say, Hey, hold up now. I had a problem with what you said the other night. I want to talk about it. I'm like, <laughs> no, right. Our, our book club was worth it. Right. It was worth it right there. So that was the coolest thing for me is that we've continued to have those conversations and they're, they're aware now of those things which before they wouldn't have looked at because it doesn't affect them, right? It's so easy for mm-hmm. to, 
go right by them. And so now they're looking around and saying, hey, you know what? That wasn't even about me, but I'm not okay with that. I'm like, that's what I'm talking about right there. That's that's it right there. Man, yeah, that's rich. That's, 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 that's really rich. Do you think there's ever going to be a time where our country will be healed of mm. just social justice? Let, let me rephrase the question. Will there ever be a point in time where social justice, where we'll just yeah. be unified? Yeah. Uh, I'm hopeful. But if I'm being honest, you know, no, um, at least not in my lifetime and your lifetime. I think mm -hmm. if it's going to happen, it's going to be after you and I have passed. Um, and there's still no guarantee, right? Even mm -hmm. if we keep up all the positive uh, momentum, I guess, that we're in, even if we kept the same steam for 100 years, I still think there's still be a ways to go. Um, and that can sound kind of hopeless, but for me, it's funny. I can, I compare this to a sport. Like we, you know, you, everyone talks about they want to win. And in this case, we want to win by having complete mm. social justice. But the part that for me, like when, for basketball, I, I tell our kids all the time, we really don't talk about winning and losing. It's about what are we doing today to prepare ourselves? Like what, what can we do to give ourselves the best opportunity? And when we get to a game, if we win, great, but we might lose. Like that's a real possibility. Right. It's possible because we're going to play a game and one team's going to win and one team's going to lose. It's 50 yeah. 50. But do you want to prepare and give it give it all you can give knowing, man, it still might not be enough for me. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Let's, yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. I still want to prepare. I still want to go after. I still want to work hard at. It. I still want to. <laughs> And I'm not guaranteed any success. And that's okay. I don't need it. That's not why I'm doing it. I, I, I want to have that success, but there is something in the, in the every day. It, it's in the little things like for us. So like I, I was starting to talk about basketball. Now I'm talking about social justice, but like, that's it. Like I want to demand equality. I want to continue mm -hmm. to push. I want to continue to use my voice. And it might be at the end of the day, I'm going to look around. You know, I could be 98 years old and be like, man, it still looks exactly the same. But damn it, if I didn't try my best. And for me, that's what it's about. And so we need people willing to approach it like that, I think, um, and just continue to go and just say, I don't care. Like, if, even, if, if, even if things fall short, now nah, we're going to keep going. We're not going to give up. We're not going to, we're going to keep going. We're not going to give up. And, and pursuing it with that mindset of not letting certain things like, man, like when, that, when, when the capital attacks happened the other week, I mean, golly, just a pit in my stomach where I'm like, man, like it felt like, we've done all this stuff this year. And then like this happens like this, it just, it felt like a real, you know, just like, you know, the, the bubble burst a little bit, but then you see the people rally from it. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not going to slow down this train. And that was encouraging. Cause I'm like, we can keep pursuing. Cause there's going to be more stuff, right? There's going to be another thing, mm -hmm. whatever that may be, that's going to, you know, try to stop it. But I think if we approach it in that way, uh, I am hopeful that one day, uh, somebody is going to see that. Man, yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. I, I really, am, I really am just remaining to be hopeful because I think there's, there, there's a lot of progress that has been made to date, and you know, there's a lot of opportunity, but there's still a lot of progress that that has been made. So I, I, I think that's, that's just a great, you know, a great perspective um, there, there from you sharing. But how, coach, how do you stay recharged though? Doing, you know, being, being the, being the husband, <laughs> being the coach, being the advocate, being the ally, like, how do you stay, how do you, how do you replenish yourself? Because this is, this is exhausting work. This is exhausting yeah. work or tiring yeah. work. Let me not say exhausting, but tiring work. That's a good work. Yeah. I, you, to be honest with you, I did a really bad job of it for a while. <laughs> Uh, I, I really did. And cause I would, I'd come home and I'd just be white. And, um, so there's, there's definitely a moment where my wife and I were, were able to have a discussion where it's like, I, I really have to, you know, verbalize like, Hey, it's okay mm -hmm. to be like, man, I'm white. I am exhausted. Or I, I'm feeling real down or I'm just feeling super, you know, unencouraged because just of all this stuff going on. And so, uh, she's been a huge source of that. Also trying not to spread myself too thin where it's like, you don't, you know, all of us, we don't have to carry everything at once. Right. We, we, we got each other's back. We can, you can carry a load today and I, I'll carry it for you tomorrow. And being able to 
realize that and, and not try to, you know, it's like when you spread yourself too thin, you're not good at anything. Um, mm-hmm. So kind of having to step back and like, all right, let's really focus on what we can focus on, you know, in this moment. So that's been big. Um, you know, I, I, my wife has been, I mean, she's, she's it, she's the rock. So um, to be able to lean on her uh, and, and family uh, certainly too, but just that's, that's been the biggest thing for me because I was kind of going down uh, a bit and then having that, that conversation with her and now every day, like excited to come home, like that kind of reboots me and I'm just excited to discuss things with her because she's passionate about these things too. And so for, you know, having sounding board, uh, to bounce ideas off of, and she's she's way smarter than I am, so it, it's <laughs> it's good to it's great to get her perspective and ideas from things too. But yeah, that's my my thing though. It's like you know you don't have to fight every single battle every single day because that's just there's no way to go about that. And I think I was trying to do that for a while and realized that that wasn't sustainable. Mm, man, yeah, I mean with the with with the pandemic, with shutdowns, and with everything else just in life. You know, we, we always have to have to find that way to get that self-care, get the recharge. And like you said, I mean, have, having a good sounding board, especially, you know, having people around us that, that are that, that are smarter than us and also people yeah. around us who, you know, care, care about us as well. Right. So I think I, yeah. I think that's really I think that's some something big that you that you just dropped there, coach. Man. And, and, you know, something else, too, I thought like it's sometimes it's like we want to we want to do these big things, which is great. But I think the change happens when we do things in our community, in our circle, you know, mm. and the people that we immediately touch. And when you start to focus on that, you're able to see it more clearly. You're able to, you know, kind of chart your path a little bit better uh, and, and more impactful than trying to do all these things. Because if you do that, you know, you do it in your community, I do that in my community. And, you know, everyone listening here does it in their community. Suddenly we start branching out and now we can start going at all that stuff together now we got something rolling too. So that, that shift in focus certainly has been a uh, positive for me. Wow. So, so get, getting on the same page, you branch out, you got to get on the same page. I think that's, <laughs> man, that's a word, man. That's, uh, that's, that's good. <laughs> that's good. I've definitely, I've definitely enjoyed this. No, I've I definitely, de- definitely been enjoying, enjoying this, this dialogue today. So I, I, I now I, I want to ask you this one though. And, and I just, I just thought about it as we're sitting here. <sighs> So there, too often I get I get reached out to, and, and it might be a former student athlete, it might be a current student athlete, whatever, and they share that one, they're either lost, and they lost just in regards to identity, what happens next, and different things like that. Where do you think the missing piece is, or what do you think the missing piece is, just in developing our athletes for for just long term success post graduation? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I think it is difficult, certainly at the Division One level, uh, Division Two, or you know any scholarship level. I think it is tough because you do wrap your identity up in your sport. Um, and I, I don't mention Division Three, which is where I'm at, because we don't have scholarships, so it's it's a little bit different. I think of a of a mindset, but I think it's hard not to wrap your identity up because you're like, man, I'm I'm going to school for free or close to free because I'm a basketball player or I'm a swimmer or I'm a lacrosse player. And so you attach your identity and your self-worth to that thing um, because it is directly connected to this other big thing, which getting college paid for, it's a pretty big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think as coaches, and again, I've coached D1 and D2, you know, and this, and I was a young coach when I was at those levels, but I think I did a pretty bad job of communicating and and with those players about those other things and and really like I had good relationships with them but making sure they did find worth in who they are as a person sport not standing and so that's something I've tried to focus on in my two years here at River Falls with our kids where we had a few kids last year that are out with season ending injuries and making them still feel valuable and worth Mm -hmm worth your time and energy even though they can't contribute to, to on the court and so that was big and and one of our kids had said something to me uh a few weeks ago i was like hey coach thank you for making me still feel important even though i couldn't play last year mm. and i think that, that's good and that's not me patting myself on the back that's me i'm telling you i've been coached for like 10 years and i finally got it in the last two so i you know i got a lot of making up to do uh but i think that's really important and i think that's our job as coaches uh, and we get caught up in the wins and losses which matter right if we don't win we get fired like that's how that works this is true uh, this is true but 
I think there is something else to be said about if you invest in your athletes as people and try to make them feel valuable as people, first and foremost, I think the sports stuff works itself out on the, on the other end. That's, that's my belief. And I'll, I'll go down swinging uh, with that belief. So I, I think, I think just with us as, as a coaches, as they're, as the people they interact with the most, probably, you know, in terms of adults on campus, I think I think we do fall short sometimes and we get caught up in the, you know, what's our game plan for next week? What's our practice schedule for the week? Uh, it's easy to fall into, but I think we have to continue to recenter ourselves and remember, like, these people, they're people and that's our job. You know, I think we all use the recruiting pitch of, hey, we're going to bring you in as a young man, young woman, and we're going to we're going to get you out of here a better version of yourself. And if we keep focus on that, I think we we maintain proper perspective, but it's super easy to lose it. And I think that's what happens all the time. And I've been guilty of it before, for sure. Man, that's, that's real. That's real coach. That's, that's real, man. Like, like I said before, I, de- I definitely enjoyed this, this, this conversation, this dialogue we were able to have today, getting to build a little bit uh, today. But before I let you go, before I let you go, I have to run you through the two minute drill. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. And 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 for those of you out there, this might be your first time listening to two minute drill. Uh, we I, I like to run each and every one of our guests through it, just giving them the opportunity or giving us the opportunity to see a different side of them, just with a few rapid fire questions, a handful, um, just to you know lighten up the mood and just to send everybody out on a high note. So, Coach, are you ready? I am ready. I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. Here we. Go. Favorite food? Wings. Okay, what what kind of wings? Uh, I I mean, I like hot stuff, so like, you know, medium to hot sauce wings. I used to live in Buffalo, so I got spoiled with wings, so now I'm like, I'm like the snobby wing eater. But I love wings. Uh, and then I love steamed crabs. I'm from Baltimore originally, mm. so, you know, Chesapeake Bay, I've got some crabs, but uh, wings are my go-to. Those are my weakness. Excellent, excellent. Uh, what's your Netflix show of preference? Oh, um, that's a good question. Um, this isn't on Netflix, but I'm, I'm on this Blue Bloods kick right now. I don't know why. Okay. Like, I don't watch okay. Blue Bloods a lot, but I powered through Breaking Bad, which is the mm. greatest show I've ever seen in my life. Oh, oh my that, goodness. That was, I, I binged that hard. Yes, yes. Breaking Bad all day. What's the last book you read? Last book I read was... Um, uh, burn your goals. Um, I, I'm completely blanking on the author right now, but it's fantastic. And I'm, I'm currently reading David and Goliath by Malcolm Gladwell, uh, which I've really enjoyed so far. Excellent. What's your favorite podcast? Oh, that's not fair. Uh, <laughs> I, golly, I'm a huge soccer fan, uh, so I okay. listen to the Men and Blazers podcast. Um, and then I, I'm a women's basketball guy, obviously. So around the rim with China Robinson, who is just, hmm. I think, is phenomenal. So that those are two off the top of the head that are good. I, I could I could take the whole two minutes. Off the <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, that's good. And then what's what's one tip that you want to leave for a student athlete? Take your Ooh. time. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing, one tip, this is good. Be honest. And when I say that, if you don't mind me expanding. um, Please, please. Because this is my approach as a coach too, of just being open and honest um, with your teammates, with your coaches, with, and, and, and I don't mean just like, you know, hey, I'm running late because my car broke down and you're like lying. Like, no, don't do that. But being honest with coach, Man, I was up till 2 a.m. with a paper last night. I'm just, I'm dragging. I'm going to give you my all, but like, I just want to let you know, you know, because I've, I've had moments where I see a kid dogging in practice where I'm like, what's her problem, right? And then come to find out, you know, her her grandmother's really sick. And like, God, like, I wish she would just like talk to me and been honest with me about that because, you know, I'm just getting on. Like, what you doing? Nothing. I'm fine, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, and vice versa with our players where I'm like trying to be super honest with them where I'm like, Hey, this is where I see you on the court. This is what you need to work on. And it's been really cool because it's, we've, we've got great dialogue. And we've, we've opened those doors. And so I think it's scary to go into the coach's office and, and kind of be like, hey, coach, I just want to talk about this. Um, but I think doing that and doing it with your teammates of, hey, like you said this thing earlier, it really, it really upset me. 
oh my bad i didn't mean it like that okay cool and then you just deal with it and so i, I know it's 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 kind of tough to approach things that way but i think if you are open with those people around you i think your experience will be as good as it it can be from that end mm, yeah, so it's probably a strange a strange answer but no, that no, that that that's a very valuable answer. And then especially the way you expounded upon it, because being honest, I can even say that applies to me even now, like being married. Like if my wife asks me what's wrong and then I'm like nothing, but then I internalize it, then it creates problems for everybody in yeah. the house. I'm so, the worst of that. I'm so <laughs> bad at verbalizing my feelings. Like I've I've done so much better lately, but yeah, I, I am the exact same way. Exactly. Oh man. Oh man. Well, okay. So I have this, this bonus question I always like to ask because I always like just to give people the, the opportunity just to, you know, introduce me to other people and I can have them as a guest. So who would be, you know, who would be somebody that you uh, would want to see me interview next on beyond the ball? Oh man. Okay. See, I feel like I'm going to leave someone out regardless. Right. Um, you know, my, my former boss, uh, when I coached at Buffalo, who's still there, the head coach there, uh, Felicia Leggett Jack. Um, she's someone who is all about empowering women. And she is loud and she's passionate. Uh, and everyone I meet, when, when they find out I worked for her, oh, you work for Coach Jack? Oh my gosh, what was that like? It must have been great. And so she's someone who just has an incredible passion. She has a great story. Um, she's someone who could have quit and didn't. And has taken Buffalo to the Sweet 16, which no one ever would have imagined that happening. And so, uh, she, Coach Jack is is awesome. She'll have you she'll have you in stitches laughing, uh, and then she'll say some stuff that just leaves you saying, mm, "Okay, all right, that's good stuff." So that would be that would be my pick. Mm, excellent, excellent. And I mean, if there's other people, you can tell me offline. It's cool. It's it's completely cool. Yeah. You know, my wife too, obviously. I don't want her to get mad at me because I think she's great. <laughs> but I feel like I, that would have been a biased answer, and you would have rolled your eyes if I said that. Well, no, no, no. I mean, so you shouted her out early. So you planted the seed early and then you came back and then came here to close the deal. And in all sincerity, my wife is smart. She knows her stuff. She comes from a basketball family. Like she's the real deal. So she's she's much better at all this stuff than I am. So she certainly would be a good one, too. Excellent. Excellent. Coach, I appreciate you coming on Beyond the Ball podcast, rocking with the ballers and myself. And I want now to give you the opportunity just to let people know where they can connect, connect with you and, you know, how they can follow you. Yeah. Um, on Twitter, I know it's on the bottom there, but it's just my name at Blake Dodonis. Uh, I'm, I'm very active on there. Uh, I, I try to split it up between obviously basketball stuff, but I try to keep it light. I try to make people laugh. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll put up a, a stupid gif or a meme or something just to <laughs> make people laugh, but I really try to keep it light. I, I, you know, every now and then I'll try to, I'll get serious and toss out something inspirational. You'll, you'll see, uh, me use my voice on there for, you know, the social justice stuff too. So it's, I'm not just, if you follow me, you're not going to just get a bunch of basketball stuff. As a matter of fact, that's probably the least I, I tweet about, uh, but uh, I just try to be authentically me on there. So uh, yeah, give me a follow and, and feel free to, to drop me a line. Boom. There it is. There it is from the man himself, Coach Blake Dudonis. Well, we certainly appreciate you coming on the podcast, sir. And you know, everybody out there listening, uh, I would encourage you all just to, you know, j just do as Coach Blake just asked, you know, for you to let him know what inspired what well, I'm saying. Let him know what, what inspired you about this episode. Let, let him know what your takeaway was from this episode and then connect with them and really follow him because he really does put out some amazing content. And and I, I, I learn daily um, from from Coach Blake's tweet. So I definitely appreciate you, Coach. Thank you. I appreciate that and look forward to uh, connecting with folks. But seriously, thanks for having me on, Jonathan. It was a uh, it was great chat with you uh, and certainly fun to get together especially with like-minded individuals so i appreciate you uh sharing your platform with me definitely definitely and to all the all the ballers out there as well as all the individuals who might be listening for the first time i would encourage you all just to take the opportunity if you felt this podcast was be beneficial i would encourage you to share it with one teammate one coach one individual and then it doesn't hurt if you happen to be on apple and just feel the spirit lead you to leave a rate and review we appreciate it. But once again, this is Beyond the Ball. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and this is where we help you succeed beyond your degree.